Hello, my name is Steve Smith. I'm an electronic technician for the genetics department at the University of Washington and a graduate student in physics. I have recently extended the methods of Matsuhiro Yanagita to show elect electrophoresis of individual DNA molecules in agarose gels. In this video presentation, I want to first show you some cartoon depictions of popular theories of DNA electrophoresis. And then I want to show you my experimental technique, how I set up the microscope. And then finally, I'm going to show you actual uh, video recordings of individual DNA molecules from 50,000 to a million base pairs in length undergoing uh, agarose gel electrophoresis. You may benefit from turning out the lights uh, because the contrast is inherently low in those video, uh, in that video footage, and you'll see it better with a darkened room. An early theory of DNA electrophoresis, called the Ogston model, or sieving model, was quite successful for DNA shorter than 10 kilobase pairs. In this model, the molecule is assumed to be in a random coil configuration. Here depicted is a 600 base pair and a 6,000 base pair molecule. The gel is represented by a series of plates with holes of varying sizes in each plate. Application of an electric field causes the negatively charged molecules to move into the gel. The small molecule can pass through any size pore, but the big molecule must wait at each plate until it encounters a large enough pore to pass through. Thus molecules are separated by size. Reasonable assumptions about the pore size distribution give good agreement between theoretical and experimental mobilities for small molecules. Obviously, a molecule such as this one megabase monster would have a very low mobility in such a model. However, it is found by experiment that in a field of several volts per centimeter, molecules larger than about 20 kilobase pairs stop losing mobility with size and travel the same speed regardless of length. This gel photo shows a variety of large DNAs, up to several million base pairs, partially digested with restriction enzymes. The samples were loaded at the top, and the smallest molecules have proceeded to the bottom. The limit of mobility for large linear fragments is located here, with species from 20 kilobase pairs on up to megabase pairs, all coming to the same point. A newer model, called biased reptation, explains this effect. In this model, the molecule unwinds from its random coil shape and snakes its way through the gel pores with one end leading and the body of the molecule following along the same path. Simplifying assumptions for the model are that the head chooses a semi-random path biased by the electric field force and that the body is constrained to that path as though it were surrounded by a tube. The speed of such a molecule is such as to make the viscous drag on the molecule equal the electric field force. Since both the drag coefficient and the electric charge scale as the length for a shape such as this, the speed is independent of the length as per experiment. This model further assumes that the end-to-end -end distance remains fixed during steady-state electrophoresis. Here the scale of the cartoon is changed as though we move back and viewed a larger section of the gel so that we can see both ends of the macromolecule. The biased reptation model has the molecules looking like snakes crawling through bamboo. This model has not been very successful at explaining mobility for various electric field strengths or during pulse field gel electrophoresis. This cartoon represents the way I now think long DNA molecules move, having seen them in the microscope. Suppose we start a 100 kilobase molecule in a partially elongated state, with its end-to-end -end distance at half its contour length. Assume a 1% gel with an electric field of 5 volts per centimeter. The tail of the molecule starts to catch up with the head for two reasons. First, the molecule exhibits so-called rubber elasticity because shorter states, like random coil, have higher entropy than the elongated states. This force adds to the tail velocity but retards the head. Second, the body of the molecule is already threaded through pores while the head has to seek out fruitful paths. The molecule bunches up and fills the local pores and voids. Several loops, as well as the true ends, begin to extend from the bunch. As the string comes tight, the longer loops pull the smaller ones backwards until they disappear. 
Finally, an extended U or J shape is attained with the molecule stretched nearly to its contour length. The molecule slips off into the longer arm of the U and we are back at the initial state. This process, which repeats at some average frequency, may help explain the so-called resonance effect in field inversion gel electrophoresis. My experiments began by creating an agarose gel on a microscope slide. This is a heated block of aluminum to heat this microscope slide. And this is a mechanism for raising and lowering a cover, cover slip onto it. Uh, here in this heated water bath is a sample of melted agarose made with half X TBE electrophoresis buffer containing half a microgram per milliliter of ethidium bromide and one microgram per milliliter of long chain DNA. In this case, it was a lambda phage DNA. Uh, I'm now taking 10 microliters of that mixture and putting it on the slide and lowering the cover slip. Gently place the cover slip onto the slide and remove it from the heat. Uh, now, five minutes after the, the agarose has gelled, or it has cooled for five minutes, I apply a strip of fingernail polish to two sides of the microscope slide. And these are my uh, electrophoresis electrodes. They consist of platinum wires attached to little suction cups, which I attach to the slide so that the wires are next to the cover slip. This is electrophoresis buffer, and a drop on each wire connects the um, electrodes to the edges of the cover slip. This is my electrophoresis power supply, which contains three 9-volt transistor batteries hooked in series and a selector switch, and this switch which makes the voltage go forward and reverse. Let's take it with us now to the microscope, uh, which is in another room. Uh, here we are in the microscope room. Uh, this is a Nikon Microfoot FT microscope equipped with epifluorescence. Uh, here is the slide and power supply installed in the microscope. It's illuminated from above in green light and viewed in red light. This is a 60x oil immersion objective. Uh, in here is a times two additional magnifier lens. This is an image intensifier, and this is a high sensitivity Viticon camera. Here is a VCR to record uh, the DNA images, and there is a monitor sitting on the table to let me view the, the DNA as I work with the slide. This is an objective micrometer test pattern consisting of squares formed by lines spaced 10 microns apart. The pincushion distortion occurs inside the image intensifier. The following microscope images were recorded in real time at this magnification except where noted. Here is lambda phage DNA in a liquid layer which forms just under the cover slip but on top of the agarose gel. The movement is Brownian motion. Now we focus down into the agarose gel. These molecules are almost stationary. Most of them are out of focus since the gel is 10 to 15 microns thick, but the depth of focus is only two. Here an electric field of three volts per centimeter is applied as measured by probe electrodes plated onto the slide. The negatively charged molecules are moving toward the positive electrode. The field is increased to five volts per centimeter. The motion is constrained as the molecules thread through the invisible pores. The field is further increased to 9 volts per centimeter. Often a molecule will form an extended U-shape and then slide off into the longest arm. Note that the molecules display entropic rubber elasticity. Back in the liquid layer, the molecules are streaming and tumbling rapidly toward the positive electrode. Some of them are caught at one end and stretched out nearly to their contour lengths, which is 16 microns. An alternate method of slide preparation involves first running a sample of yeast DNA out on an agarose gel in a device we call a rotogel, which is an ophage type tacking gel, a circular gel which rotates between two angles 
in a dish with a constant directional electric field. This is the agarose gel, which I have removed from the rotogel slide, and I have stained it with ethidium bromide in electrophoresis buffer for two hours, and then destained it overnight in electrophoresis buffer also. And here is a, a photograph of that gel um, taken at full scale so that the dimensions of the gel are the same as the dimensions of the photograph. And I simply slip the photograph underneath the gel, uh, line up the wells from the gel with the wells in the photograph, and then take this thing, which is a, like a cookie cutter, similar to a pasture pipette, and punch out a particular band of DNA that I'm interested in. And then I transfer it to the heated block uh, microscope slide and squirt it out and slowly lower the cover glass. This is uh, low melt agarose and it will remelt at about 50 degrees C uh, on this block and spread out underneath the cover slip. Here is the smallest chromosome of the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae at rest in the agarose. Each is about a quarter million base pairs in length. Here a field of 8 volts per centimeter is applied. Note that the leading ends are brightest. Evidently the DNA is compacted or at least unstretched at that end. Here is chromosome 7 of Saccharomyces cerevisiae which is about 1.2 million base pairs long. An electric field is applied. Much of the molecule is out of the focal plane, so sections of it seem to appear or disappear. Here is a demonstration of corner turning using the smallest yeast chromosome. In order to resolve those longer molecules, all of which came to the same point in our conventional gel photo, the Ophage technique is employed, where the electric field direction changes periodically. Here the field is switched through an angle of 120 degrees using an array of electrodes around the cover slip. The arrow indicates the direction of the electric field force on the molecule. Here are molecules in the surface layer responding to an ophage field. The liquid layer is very thin and the molecular motion is constrained by many obstructions. Perhaps this is similar to a projection onto a plane of the molecular motion down inside the gel. These are longer chromosomes of yeast undergoing ophage and seen with half normal magnification. Corners are left in the path from when the field last changed direction. The molecules often reverse in their paths when the field switches. Back at normal magnification, here is the small chromosome of yeast undergoing field inversion gel electrophoresis. This is a different technique for separating very large DNA molecules, where the electric field is reversed periodically. The pulse time is made longer for one direction, so that the molecules make net progress through the gel. 
Here the forward time, toward the right, is double the reverse time. The sound is made by the relay that reverses the electric field. Notice that the initial contraction in the reverse direction is very rapid since the elasticity aids the electric field. Also notice how quickly the bright spot at the head of the molecule changes sides. Here is an interesting sight, as long DNA molecules are driven from the liquid on the right into an agarose wall on the left. Most molecules are above or below the focal plane. The field is now reversed. Finally, here are larger Saccharomyces cerevisiae chromosomes drifting in the liquid layer under the influence of an electric field. This is not gel electrophoresis, but it gives a clear picture of the mechanical properties of large naked DNAs in solution. This picture gives me hope that we might someday build a device to read the base sequences from single molecules like these.